question two. Um, this question is about moments. So a uniform wooden beam AB of mass 20 kilograms and length 4 meters rests in equilibrium in a horizontal position on two supports. Okay, so we've got the supports C and D. One support is at C where AC is 1.6 meters and the other support is at D where DB is 0.4 meters. A boy of mass 60 kilograms stands on the beam at the point P where AP is 3 meters as shown in figure 1. So you can see but we have to draw our own figure so that we can add the rest of the distances and everything that we want to add to solve the question properly. The beam remains in equilibrium in a horizontal position. Okay, so it is in equilibrium. This is also important to solve the questions about moments. Now let me draw it. Here I'm adding the mass of the uniform rod itself because it is uniform so the mass acts at the center of the rod so here the distance from A to this center would be 2 meters and the distance from the center to B would, would also be 2 meters and then this is point P where that um, the boy is standing I think it is a boy yeah that boy is standing at 60 kilograms so here it'll be 60 G newtons because I'm considering the weight, I have to multiply the mass by g. Here I have the two supports, and then I've uh, drawn these arrows to show the reactions that these supports have on the beam. So this is the reaction of C, and this is the reaction of D. These are also in Newtons. This distance is given in the question, it's 1.6 and this one as I uh, mentioned earlier that it's 2 meters from A to the center. So I can find the distance from C to the center, it will be 2 minus 1.6 which is um, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 meters. Um, the point P, they have given us the distance AP, which is 3 meters. So we can find the distance of P from D, or the, sorry, the distance of P from the center. Because we know that A to P is 3 meters, and we know that A to the center is 2 meters, so from the center to P would be 1 meter. So it would be 3 minus 2, which is 1 meters. And DB is also given in the question which is 0.4 meters here. And now because we know all of these distances, we can find the distance from P to D, which comes out as 0.6. Because from A to P is 3, so P to B would be 1, and then we can say 1 minus 0.4 as 0.6. And just to make sure at the end, Add all of your dis distances to make sure that you have not made any mistake and you have to uh, check that it comes to a total of 4 meters because the length, of, uh, the length is 4 meters here. Now let's read the question. By modeling the boy as a particle and the beam as a uniform rod, Find in terms of G the magnitude of the force exerted on the beam by the support at C. So for this I'm going to take moments about D so that the reaction at D will not be considered in the equation. If you take moments about A or B then you'll have two unknowns, you'll have to make two equations and it'll be quite lengthy. So it's better to take moments about D when you're finding the reaction at C and to take moments about C when you're finding the reaction at D. So let me show you how I do it. The first thing we're going to do is taking moments about D. So label what, are you, what you're doing as you go. So now there are two ways to um, write the equation for the moments about D. 
you could do it all the moments at one side and then equate it to zero because it is um, the beam is in equilibrium or you could write clockwise at one side and anti-clockwise at one side um, uh, and then solve so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write anti-clockwise on one and clockwise on the other now here the moment if I look at we what we have is at D. Now you might ask me why we're taking at moments about D and why we're not considering um, the reaction at D in this equation. So I'm just gonna uh, show you by writing this in the equation, but you don't really have to show this in your um, exam. It's kind of understood, but just to make this clear, so the equation of moments is that we multiply the force or the weight by the distance from the point that we're taking. So here we're taking D, right? And then we've got RD. So I could say that RD times the distance from D, which is zero. So that will come to zero, right? So that would be zero. So that's why I'm just not taking this. Okay, let's, let's just remove this and start again. So I'm going to start with clockwise here. So these two are moving anti-clockwise. You can see like this, and then this one as well is anti-clockwise. So RC is clockwise. I'm going to say that the reaction at C times the distance from C to D, it is 2 meters. If you add 0.4 plus 1 plus 0.6, it's 2 meters. Now equals, because we, we don't have any other reactions which are clockwise, so we're going to say um, the other, we're going to move on to the other side of the equation. So here I'm going to write 20G times 1.6. So 20g times 1.6, because that's the distance from the center to D, plus 60g times 0.6 meters, okay? So this one is 2rc equals 32g plus 36g, and then when I add these and divide by 2, I get rc equals 68 g divided by 2. We have to give our answer in terms of g so we don't really need to write the value of g here. So the answer is 34 g newtons. Okay, I hope that's clear. Now for the next part, part 2, for the A part 2, they're asking us to find in terms of g the magnitude of the force exerted on the beam by the support at d. Now you could do the same thing which I did here. You could take the moments about um, C and repeat the method and when, once you do that you will not have RC in the equation and you'll just have RD. You could do basically what you would do is RD times 2 and then equals 60 times 1.4 plus 20 times 0 0.4 and you will get the answer and this method is has an advantage that you will not for example you made a mistake here in the first part so you will not be carrying forward that mistake in the second part um, when you're solving because you will not be using your answer from the first part so this is helpful if sometimes um, you have to use the answers from the pre previous questions and you have an option to solve it without using that answer and you can solve it just by using um, the values given in the question. It's better uh, because you will not be repeating or carrying forward any mistakes and you will be saving that one mark of the final answer because you will be getting the marks for the methods but that one final answer would be wrong because of the previous um, answers mistake. So that's an, uh, one thing but I'm going to do the method which will be in which we will be using the value of RC because that method is quicker and uh, you just have to make sure that this is correct. But if you're scared, you can try both methods and check if your answer is the same with both method methods if you have time in the exam. So what we're going to do is the forces, I'm just going to write this down in short form, the forces upwards, okay, so upward forces are equal to all downward forces because it is in equilibrium. So upward forces we have RC and RD so we're just gonna say RC plus RD equals downward forces we have 20G plus 60G so that's it. This is very simple. 20G plus 
60g. Our c we already know it is 34g plus r d equals 60 plus 20 it's 80g and then r d is 46g newtons so it's 80 minus 34g which is 46g newtons so that's how you do the uh, part a1 and a2 of question number two